So, this morning, I was waiting on Wayne to um, come get in the car, and then he ended up waiting on me. But, um, I don't know why. I, I don't know why. He, like, he was going to say it if I didn't, but... Um, yeah, I go out and I think I'm ready, and then I stand out there and I think, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do this. So anyway, he ends up in the car before me, dad going it, and I try every time uh, to get there, but just doesn't seem to work. So I, was, I walked outside a little bit there, and I saw this ruckus going on over in the yard there, and um, I thought, what is going on over there? And you saw all this, these birds were just chirping and carrying on, and and uh, it, they were, I could see them like fluttering around. I thought, what, what is happening? So I just walked over and here were, here were these two beautiful bluebirds. I mean, they were the male. They were just, you know how brilliantly blue they are. They're just, just gorgeous. And I mean, they were fighting. I mean, they were going at it. And the interesting thing about this, I've never seen this before, there were Three little sparrows sitting around. They had landed and were sitting around there watching them. <laughs> Did you ever say my you know, I don't know if it was a fight that sold tickets or what, but it was the strange. I thought, are those sparrows actually sitting there watching these bluebirds fight? I think they were getting a kick out of it. Because they were you know. And I thought, so I walked up there and I looked closer and I hollered like, quit your fighting, you know, and of course they just, I mean, they kept at it, and finally I scared them enough that they flew off and one chased the other, and you know, anyway, I don't know what happened after that, but the, but the fight was over, <laughs> and I guess the sparrows didn't get their full tickets worth, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, but anyway, it made me think about how uh, the church is, okay, so we are we're beautiful. God says we are beautiful. We are precious in His sight. We are uh, more than conquerors. We're actually a peculiar people, and He loves us like He created each one of us. We are beautiful in His sight. And when the church fights to get fights like that, the enemy just sets up and gets his ticket and sits there and watches as we fight. That's how we are destroyed from within. Because we are fighting each other. And all Satan has to do is sit back and watch. Yes? Yes. I don't know how that's going to go with my sermon. But I do know that it was very clear to me. I felt like the Lord gave me that message. Be very careful. Be very aware of what you say and what you do to your brothers and sisters in Christ. And the Lord has spoken to me this week about um, the haughty eyes. You know, there's the abominations in the Word, and it talks about haughty eyes. Be careful how you look at others. Be careful how you roll your eyes. Be careful how you, mm, yeah, right. I'm very good at it. I am. It's very good at it. And the Lord has been really convicting my heart. Be careful how you look at others because your eyes are the window of your soul. People look in your eyes and they can see life or they can see death. They can see anger. They can see pain. You, you can. And the eyes reflect actually who you are. They truly do. All my mother had to do was look at me and I knew, right? Remember? She didn't have to say a word. All she had to do was you're <laughs> You better watch it, Fred. No marriage counseling this morning. <clears throat> anyway, I just, I feel like I needed to put that out there because, as our sister Patsy said this morning, uh, you know, to be in prayer for new beginnings. If the enemy cannot get us from the outside, if he can't get us with things that are going on on the outside, he will work at us from within. So guard your love and your heart for each other. Just guard it. Because what we have here is very precious. And I pray for this church a lot because I have seen churches divide. I have seen them go down the tubes. 
because one half wants one thing and the other wants another thing and they end up fighting and Satan says get the popcorn we're in for a good show how sad how sad that we fall into that and it um, and it weakens our testimony to others because they say well if the church is like that <laughs> you know how are they any different than the world we have to show that we are different than the world and we have to keep from getting offended and keep from uh, uh, harming our brothers and sisters in Christ in Christ is where we live in Christ is how we do it we can't do it on our own because we all have our own stuff but it's in Christ that's how we do it deep calling unto deep going deeper into what he has for you will give you what you need to be able to love your brother and sister even though they may rub you like sandpaper even though things happen that you just think oh my gosh I could just wring their neck <laughs> Christ will give you what you need he will he'll give you the love that you need so we're going to go into Isaiah 41:10. It says, the Lord says, oh, I need to cut up. The Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. The Lord says, fear not. What does that mean when he says, fear not? All through the word of God, he talks about fearing not, fear not, do not be afraid. Does it mean that nothing bad is ever going to happen? Does it mean that you'll never go through tests and trials? No, it just means fear not when they come. Because the Lord is with us. He said, be not dismayed, for I am your God. Why should we be dismayed? Why should we be in fear when we have a God that is above all names, that is above anything that's going on in this nation? We have a God who reigns. The fear, if we start getting into fear, start looking around at where that fear is coming from. Start understanding that the enemy is trying to find a place in your life that he can come in and cause you great fear. Great fear. This, uh, this morning, I didn't tell Wayne or Kenton this, but it happens quite frequently. I have this orange cat that we call Pumpkin. And it's not because she's orange. They found her in a pumpkin patch, so we call her Pumpkin. But Pumpkin uh, is an outdoor cat. Um, we have some allergies in our household, so we do not have indoor animals. We just just never could work. And um, so Pumpkin, she gets the back porch there, and she's just, you know, she she's just, she's my cat, you may as well say. So Pumpkin, every time the door opens, guess what Pumpkin wants to do? So I was in a hurry, of course, and... I came back in the house and left the door open. And guess who comes? <laughs> and I mean, she had a plan. She knew where she was going. And um, I hollered, pumpkin, pumpkin, come here, pumpkin. And the more I hollered, the more she went. So I had to chase her down, grab a hold of her, cat hair everywhere, you know, and threw her. Sorry, guys, I threw her out the door. <laughs> out you go. Um, and she just stands there and looks at me, so, uh, you know, waiting for a more opportunity. <coughs> yes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus is trying to tell us, do not be afraid. If you open the door to fear, if you open that door and you get afraid, guess what happens? He comes in. He comes in. Now, there's a lot of things going on in this church. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of a bad report. Do not walk in that kind of fear. Because when you walk in that, then this Satan will not only come in with that, he will bring other things in. True? Have you noticed that? Then you're anxious. Then you can't sleep. How many of you have a hard time sleeping? Do you ever wonder why? The Lord promises us that, he, that we, he, we can lie down beside the still waters, that we can rest. 
He will give us rest. But if our minds are so in fear and afraid of this and afraid this might happen or this is going on over here, our minds are so like this, where is the rest? We are being robbed of our rest in the Lord. We truly are. So fear not, he says, I am with you. He guards us. He protects us. He, he watches over us. He supports us. He supplies to us what we need. He comforts us and strengthens us. Fear not. He is with you. He gives you everything you need. We need not fear of our enemies. Who is our enemy? Satan. We are not to fear him. We are not to fear him. But we get so afraid of, of what we think he can do. You know what? I think when we actually see who he is, we will be surprised at the littleness of him. He is not God. He's only doing what God is allowing right now. That's all, that's all he's doing. All he can do. Is he messing with your mind? Why? <laughs> For one thing, we let him. Come on now. We let him. We let him in. Oh my gosh. Woo. If you're in this word and you see how many times it says fear not, do not be afraid. What the heck are you letting him in your mind for? It's, it's rough. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. It will destroy your marriage. It will destroy your family. It will destroy you. Fear will destroy you. I see people still walking around, and I hope I don't offend anybody, with a mask and a head shield, gloves. I see, I see people walking around like that still. Fear. Fear has caused us to be afraid of each other. Oh my gosh. Well, if we get afraid of each other, then Satan wins. Because he says not to forsake the gathering of the brethren. He says where two or more are gathered, there he is in the midst of us. He says a three-braided cord cannot be easily broken. Does that sound like we're supposed to be apart? In Acts, he talked about they were all together in one accord. All together in one accord. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be faced with this again. This is not over. It is not over, folks. Be prepared. So we need not fear whatsoever they may be called. We need not fear whatsoever we may be called to suffer for his name's sake. For Jesus' name's sake, we are not to fear if we are to suffer. If the disciples had feared, if they had turned back, if they had said, nope, I can't do it, I'm too afraid, I'm going back home, I'm going to go take care of my wife and my family, um, this is what I just, I can't do it. Where would we be? Where would the church be? If they had gotten into fear, even Jesus the Christ, as he prayed in the garden, if he had gotten into fear and said, Father, I just, I don't know that I can do this. And he did say, you know, if you can, take this cup from me. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to do this. But he knew that he had to. Or we, his people, the, his children, would be lost. We can pass through the fire and the water and the valley of the shadow of death with no fear. That's big, isn't it? You've got to be pretty deep to know that. You've got to be pretty deep to know that you can walk through those things and fear will not be a factor. Wasn't there a show called that? Fear factor? Fear will not be a factor in that whole equation. You will not open the door to that. You will not look at that. Then he says, be not dismayed, for I am your God. I am your God. 
Be, we are to be sure of his power. Are you sure of Christ's power in your life? Do you even understand what that is? And I'm talking to myself. Do I even understand what that power is? That wherever I go, the power of Christ goes with me? Do you know when you walk in a room, the power of Christ, if Christ is in you, the power of Christ goes with you. That is huge. Knowing that you carry his presence wherever you go, it has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with him. And it shines out of your eyes. It shines out of your eyes. It says that we can expect all that we need and that we are not to fear our enemies. We're not to be dismayed of anything that should come our way. We're not to get into dismay. And he tells us, um, with him being our God, that we will not become weak because we will have his strength within us. Don't, don't be dismayed. Don't worry. I am your God. Have you ever heard him whisper that to you? Have you ever heard him say, um, so yesterday we were um, working in the flower beds, one of my favorite pastimes, but I can tell I'm going to be like a little older because <laughs> I was a little stiff and sore this morning. Um, but anyway, we were working in the flower beds and um, I, there's dill that comes up in my flower beds and I love it. I, I love it to see it come up, but it was in the way. So I pulled it out. Um, just up, and it was beautiful. It was tall. It was in the breeze. It was it was beautiful and fresh. And I just laid it to the side. And I know it wasn't. I know it wasn't five minutes. And I walked back, and it was wilted, like wilted almost immediately. And I thought that's how it is when we get away from the Word of God. I mean, we have to be in it all the time. Is Sunday enough for you? I would hope not. I would hope that Sunday is not enough for you. It has to be more than a Sunday morning. Because if you think that Sunday morning is going to hold you, you're going to end up like this. And I believe, as in the Church of Acts, where they gather together every day, read the Bible, studied the Bible together, that's where their strength came from. That's where the, when the church caught on fire. And that's why they had the power of the Holy Spirit within. Because they were meeting together. They were encouraging one another. They were building one another up. If you do not grow weary. If you do not grow weary. Of gathering together. Of being together. It says, I wrote down here, and so it's something I have found. Our hearts will not melt like wax within because we know that God is our God. And we will not fear, and we will not be dismayed, and we know that he is with us. And we will stay rooted in the dirt of his word and his presence, and we will flourish we will flourish. And the enemy wants to come in that door, rip you out of the ground, and he wants to kill you and destroy you. That's what he wants to do. That's why the tests and trials come, because that's what he wants to do. This past week was a humdinger. Yeah. And Satan wanted to destroy he wanted someone to turn from the Lord. He wanted someone to blaspheme the Lord's name. He wanted someone to speak against the Lord. Wouldn't you say? And the only reason that we can stand is because we praise him in the storm. We praise him no matter what. We praise him in life and we praise him in death. And Jesus Christ is Lord. It doesn't matter. 
because he is Lord. And it doesn't change. Our circumstances will always change. But Jesus Christ will always be Lord. And in the end, we will all meet him. We will all bow before God. And we will give an account of every idle word, of everything we've ever done against the kingdom of Jesus. And we will have to give an account. I would say to you today, if Christ is not your Lord, today is a good day to make him your Lord. Because we do not know if we have, like uh, Brother David said, we don't even know if we have today. We make our plans. You know, it says many are the plans in the man's heart. But it is the Lord's plans that prevail. You better believe it is. You can make all the plans you want. You can have it all written down. And boy, I do this all the time. I make a list. Today I'm going to do this and this and this. And I'll get a phone call. It is the Lord's plans that prevail. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Robert. It is the Lord's plans that prevail. That's why we must go deeper into who He is. We don't even know what the Lord's plans are. But as we get deeper into who He is, we start hearing and we start moving in it. We start seeing what He wants. Years ago, when I wanted to start these classes to be a, a pastor, a minister, I remember thinking, I don't know how this will ever happen. You probably heard me tell the story. I don't even know how this would ever happen, Lord. You know, but I just sense that's what I'm supposed to do. But I don't know how to do it. I have no idea. I have no clue. I'm just, you know, a country girl. I raised, helped raise four kids with Wayne. Um, his wife. We have, a, you know, a lot to take care of at our home. I was working. I was landscaping and cleaning houses at the time. When would I have even had time for it? What? I don't know how it could happen. And I was working in the garden at uh, the church where Wayne and I were attending. And um, the pastor walked down the hill and said, there's a class starting next week. If you're interested in it, it will help. It will. It's the ACTS program that will help you get your license into the ministry of the church. How about that? Isn't that amazing? And I thought, oh, wow, next week? I don't know if I'm ready, Lord. <laughs> I've been waiting all this time, but I don't know if I'm ready. Um, and it began. It began the next week. But I'd waited and I'd waited and I thought, how can it be? How can it ever happen? What could, how could this even work out? And God made a way. Because I just, I knew that it was there. I knew there was something. Don't you know there's something in you that God is trying to call out of you? Don't you know there is a plan in there? There's a, there's a purpose in there for you that God is trying to call out of you? That even what you're doing right now, there's more to what you're doing? Don't you see that there's always more to what he's calling you into? Because one thing I know about Jesus is he is never dull and he is never boring. There is always something going on. There is always someone somewhere to minister. <coughs> yes, always. Always somewhere to minister. Someone needs ministry. <clears throat> it says, I will strengthen you. I will help you. He will strengthen you. He will help you. Every Sunday morning, the Lord strengthens me. And He helps me. How about you, Bernie? When you get up in the morning and you know you got to come in here and do this, He strengthens you. He helps you. He, he helps you do the, du the duties that He's called you to do. He helps you. He exercises grace to you. He says, Karen... Don't worry about it. I've got this. I am God. Fear not. I, I'm, I've already gone ahead of you. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not up to you. 
He helps us to resist temptations. How often are we tempted to do something that we know we shouldn't do? Or say something that we know we shouldn't say? He helps us. He strengthens us so that we can say, uh, no, not going to go there. Not going to say that. Not going to do that. He helps us to bear afflictions. Things that happen to us. He helps us. He strengthens us to bear them. I've watched Eddie and Darlene this past week as they have borne this tragedy. He has strengthened them as I knew he would. He strengthened Chris and Donna as I knew he would when they left this parking lot. He was strengthening them. He was giving them wisdom to know what to do. Do not underestimate how God can strengthen you and give you what you need when you need it. Are you calling out to Him? Are you looking for Him? Are you seeking Him? Are you wanting to go deeper? Are you okay where you are? It's really up to you. It really is. We are, He strengthens us in persecutions. Have any of us been in here ever been persecuted yet? For the gospel? Has He strengthened you? Yes. He gives you a resolve. A resolve. Oh, this is what I believe. They may say I'm, I'm stupid. They may say, what a crazy person. But he will give you the strength to get through that. Do you think more may be coming? Maybe. <clears throat> and also, this is what I loved. It says he strengthened us, strengthens us to do our generation work according to the will of God. The generation that you are in, he will strengthen you to do the work and the will of the Father. You know, oftentimes, and I've noticed this in churches, um, they, they really concentrate on the youth and the young. There's nothing wrong with that. But what about everybody else? We must understand that wherever we are, whatever age we are, God will give us what we need to do His will and His work. Do not underestimate the age that you are. No matter how young, no matter how old, God is working in you, in your generation. Understand that He will strengthen you in that generation. He will give you this Holy Spirit light that will shine into your generation. The time that you were born into. The time that he has you walking on this earth. He strengthens you to do it. Then he says, yes, I will help you. He will help us out of the afflictions and the temptations. Out of the hands of our enemies. To carry out our duties. To exercise grace. To bear the cross. To bear the cross. And he will help us fight the battle for the Lord to his glory. How about that? Isn't that amazing? He will help us. He will show us how to do this. He will rise us up as warriors for Christ. Who wants to be a warrior? Yes, I do, but I can guarantee you one thing. You better get some training. You better know what you're doing. Because if you go in it without any training, what's going to happen? That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have church. That's why we gather together so that we can learn from one another, get in the gospel, seek it, and find it so that we can stand. And when we pray, we expect God to move. That this church must learn to pray and expect God to move. I don't want to be an old wishy-washy, warm, fuzzy church. I do not want to be that. Do you? Why not believe what God says? Let, how about let's do that? Let's just believe what God says. Let's believe that when we lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Let's believe it as one and see what he does. The prayers of a righteous man availeth much, 
Why would he tell us that if it isn't true? The church is so lacking in the power of the Holy Spirit that was given to us as a gift to protect us and guard us and keep us and hold us in the storm. I will uphold thee with my righteous right hand. His righteous right hand. Who sits at the right hand of the Father? Jesus the Christ. He is at the right hand of the Father. And he says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand by his power. And I had written down here something about the right hand, and I don't know if I'll be able to find it now, um, what it meant. Yeah, uh, yes, the, the right hand is a seen as a place of honor and status. The Lord's right hand, it's seen as a place of honor and status. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. It is affirming that he has equal status to the Father within the Godhead. And if you look through the, uh, the scriptures, it has several scriptures of Jesus at the right hand of the Father, the place of honor. Why is Jesus at the right hand of the Father? Because it is the place of honor and glory and power. And when the Lord says, I will uh, help you with my righteous right hand, there is power in that. Did you ever think about that? I don't know who all in here is right or left-handed. But one of your hands is more powerful than the other, yes? My right hand I can do a lot more with than I can my left hand. Gee, the Lord, His right hand, His right hand is righteous. And that's how He will help us. He is Jesus is the author of righteousness to His people. No matter the trials and the temptations, if we stay in God's ways, we will not fall and we will persevere to the end. Yes! Yes, we will persevere to the end. Jesus says we will. Karen doesn't say. Jesus says. If we do not fall, if we do not cave, if we do not give in, if we do not let Satan in the door, we will persevere and we will not fall. The church there is a church that Christ is raising up that will not fall. The remnant, it will not fall to the schemes of the enemy in this day. Hallelujah, yes? yes. Hallelujah. The church that he is raising up, we are called. Do not become unrooted. Do not allow Satan to steal, kill, and destroy you. Do not allow him to come in and tell you things that are not true. Turn the TV off. Sorry, men. Turn it off. <laughs> the news will... <laughs> yeah. Most of the time, I'll sit and watch it, and I sit there, and all the time in my mind, and Wayne knows this. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I believe it. I do not like him. I, I mean, it's just, it's terrible. So I usually get up and go do something else because I find I have a bad attitude. Um, I, I want to read something to you that I'm going to end with that I just I found this morning, and I thought this is so powerful. And I want you to hear this. 1 Kings 18, <clears throat> verse 21. So, this is in uh, where Elijah confronts the prophets of Baal. And um, he, he not only confronts them, but he defeats them. Okay? So, um, Ahab sent to all the people of Israel. Ahab is the bad king. Uh, evil king, I won't just say that. He's evil, 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 evil. Uh, Jezebel was part of Ahab, and they were evil. Very, very evil, okay? So here's Elijah, a prophet of God. 
And so Ahab, the king, sent to all the people of Israel, because the, the Israelites were living uh, uh, in, in this uh, um, kingdom, and they were falling away from the Lord. And he sent, to, he sent to all the people of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And in verse 21, that's what I want you to hear. It's, and Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go limping between two different opinions? I love that. I read that and I thought, that is, that is the church today. The Gospels were written for the church. The church is who God is after. He wants the church, his remnant, those that love him, those that believe him, those that follow him. You cannot live, remember we, I had a sermon a long time ago, you cannot live on the fence or on, you have to live here or here. You have to decide. It says, how long will you go limping between two different opinions? How long are you going to be over here and over here? How long are you going to believe God and believe uh, the prophets of Baal? How long? It's the same today. How long are you going to believe what the evil that is coming out in this land, how long are you going to believe it's not really that bad? <clears throat> it is that bad. It is that bad. So how long will we go on limping between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. But make your choice. Make your decision. How long are you going to keep opening the door to Satan and allowing him to come in and mess with you? How long? Jesus says, well, I'm going to read this. And the people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only, am left a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. And if you want, read the rest of that in your own time. It's a very interesting story. Elijah stood up to the mass of 450 prophets of Baal. He said, even if I am the only one left, the Lord, that doesn't, that doesn't bother the Lord. The Lord is still the Lord. He can do whatever he wants to do. And he's going to take out the prophets of Baal. Right now, what we're seeing is evil beyond evil. More than we can even imagine is going on in the world. That's why now is the time to get deep in with the Lord, to know who He is, so that when the test and trials come, we will be able to stand and stand firm, not be knocked to and fro by every doctrine that comes along. That's what's happening. It's a big shakeup. It's a big shakeup. You know, this morning I was going to have everybody get up. I decided against it because I wasn't quite sure how that was going to go. But I was going to have everybody get up and just, I'd say, now everybody that has blue on, go over here. And everybody that has green on, go over here. And everybody that has uh, black on, go over there. And I would venture to say most of you have uh, maybe two of the colors on. And it would be, ma I just saw this mass confusion. Mass confusion. Well, this is blue, but then I have green. And this is black, but I have blue. And I, I, all I saw was just this mass confusion. And then the Lord, come, it's like the Lord comes in and he says, you're over here. You're over here. <coughs> the time is coming when the Lord is going to start sorting and sifting and shaking. And the chaos of this world will be chaos. But his church, he will say, I want you on the right hand. I want you here. He's, gonna, he's sorting, even as I preach this morning. He's sorting. In churches across this land. He's sorting. Who will follow me? 
How long are you going to go limping around following one way or the other way? That's what he wants to know. That's the question he's asking. That's why it is so important to know the scripture in Isaiah 41 10. To fear not, for he is with us, church. He is with us. Guard it. Keep it. Watch after one another. Love one another. Help each other. And the Holy Spirit will give us the strength that we need to do what we need to do in the days ahead. Do a little research on what's going on in the nation. Things that you don't hear on the TV, even though that's bad enough. Just, just do a little research. So today, as we go out, as the church of Jesus the Christ. That's who we are. That's who we witness as believers in Jesus. Where's that scripture in Ezekiel? 33, 8 and 9. The one you sent me. I want you to hear this. Then I am going to stop. Promise. <laughs> Promise. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yeah, look here. Huh. Yeah, that's it. Ezekiel 33, 8, 9. Okay, so this, um, uh, maybe I shouldn't end this with, but I'm going to. So, this is Ezekiel. And uh, this is Ezekiel 33. And Ezekiel is Israel's watchman. He watches after Israel, okay? So down in verse 7, we'll start there. It says, so you, the Lord was telling him, so you, son of man, I made a watchman for the house of Israel. He said, you are watchman over the house of Israel. You are the one. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak. To warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. You hear? But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. It's serious business to preach the gospel. It's serious business if you know Jesus to speak it. Ezekiel, he probably thought, boy, what am I getting into? Maybe I'll change my mind. But it is a serious thing to say you're a believer in Jesus Christ. Are you? Are you not? Do you believe it? Do you not? How deep do you want to go? It's up to you. Yes? Amen. So we give God the glory through it all. 